They took everything. Jeez. They don't even have the courtesy to steal my Manfrotto 055 Pro. I mean, insult to injury. Jordan, we gotta cancel the shoot, man. Someone broke in my house, they stole all my gear. Like everything. Dude, same. Someone took all my shit. What? I gotta check my security camera footage. Oh, yeah, let's check out that footage, man. We gotta find out who did this. Donna did it. Hello, police. I'd like to report the theft of thousands of dollars worth of camera gear, and I'm gonna make it easy for you because I know who did it. I know his name. I know where he lives. He's from Edmonton, which should be illegal anyways, okay? Uh, some people consider him a public figure, a YouTube sensation. He's got a YouTube channel. Twitter, we know his Twitter. Yeah, yeah, we know his Twitter. Yeah, okay, we know his Twitter. Uh, his YouTube handle is Donna did it. I mean, that's basically a confession, right? Yeah, yeah but no, but, yeah. F okay. Fine, yeah, thanks, okay. Yeah, they can't do anything. Welcome back, Deep Review TV viewers. It's Chris Nichols here. We got a fun video for you today because what happens if all your stuff gets stolen? You gotta buy some more stuff or you know, maybe you are just building up a budget and you're ready to get into photography. We got really good feedback and had a lot of fun making our what camera gear would we buy for under a thousand dollar video. So we thought now let's expand that budget. We're gonna expand it to $4,000 USD, which gives us a nice clean round number of about $5,000 Canadian. And we're gonna look at what camera gear we can get for that budget. Uh, and we're gonna go to the camerastore.com again because of course we have a lot of history with them. They're our favorite retailer here in Canada. They got great pricing and so on and so forth. So we're gonna start shopping now. I do want to point out that for this budget, you know, Jordan and I were looking at gear that is stuff that we would buy ourselves. So keep that in mind. It's going to be our bias for what we think is best. Uh, let's start shopping and to see what we can get for a dollar. Now, naturally, when you have a larger budget, you're going to think full frame. But in all honesty, when you start factoring in lenses, we are looking at basically entry level full frame. So the first kit that I want to take a look at is with the thought process of why go entry level full frame when I could go highest end APS-C kit. So I'm looking at the Fujifilm X-T4. Great camera, fast autofocus, rugged, excellent handling all around. And then this leaves me enough money to then also get some nice lenses. I chose the Fujifilm 10 to 24 XF F4. This is an excellent lens to cover my landscape needs, you know, cover my wide angle stuff. Then I chose the Fujifilm XF 70 to 300. Now we just recently reviewed it. It's an excellent lens. It's not going to give me the thin depth of field of the 5142.8, but that puts me way over budget. And this lens is awesome for any sort of sports or wildlife. And then just to squeeze in the middle, so I'm not missing out too much of my range, the 35 millimeter F2 XC lens. Yes, it's very affordable, but optically it was a fantastic kit. So with three lenses and the X-T4, I came out just under budget. So, you know, I could get a really cheap memory card or a lens cloth. Okay, but now let's start looking at full frame because this does make a lot of sense. Now, the second kit that I'm looking at is actually the Canon EOS R6. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, Chris, there are more affordable entry-level cameras in the Canon lineup. And I'm just gonna say, I've used the RP, I've used the R, they're not bad cameras, but I never felt like the technology was on par with other companies at the time. And uh, I just feel like in this case, I wanna spend my money on something that I'm gonna really enjoy for many years to come. So that pushes me to the EOS R6, but that does eat up a lot of my budget. Now I'm getting this with the 24 to 105 f4 kit lens. You do get a bit of a price, uh, you know, drop when you get both together and it is a great lens. Now just getting the standard kit left me quite a bit of budget left over. So I was able to throw in a Canon 50 millimeter STM 1.8 lens, a very affordable lens. And you know, Canon does make some very expensive RF mount lenses, but they do also make some affordable ones. So I did like that. And I still have a little bit of room left over to replace that Manfrotto tripod with something else, or you know, maybe get some filters, extra battery, that kind of stuff. However, I am now limited in lens range. I don't have a lot, just the 24 to 105 and a fast 50 in the middle. Now the last kit that I'm considering I found quite interesting because first off, here's some context. I was looking at the Z6 II, but it's still very pricey. Then I was thinking, well, why not save the money and go with the Z6? I still get a lot of features and it does save me quite a bit of money. But then I thought, why not go with the Z5? That makes a lot of sense. I mean, maybe it's an older sensor, but it's still a really good sensor. But I'm getting an excellent EVF in there, fantastic handling, decent autofocus. And honestly, the Z5 just represents incredibly good value for the dollar. And it let me do 
something very unique. It let me buy the 70 to 200 2.8. Now, this said mount lens is just unbelievably good. It blows my budget, but it's a very versatile lens. I could use it for sports, wildlife, portraits. I mean, it's an awesome lens. And then to round out my other choices in the wide angle and normal range, I'm going with the kit lens for the Z5, the 24 to 50. Now, it is a cheap lens and it's a slow lens. However, it is actually optically quite decent and it will tide me over until I can invest some more money and get some better glass in that range. But that 7200 is going to carry me quite far. The only issue, slightly over budget. I'm going to see if I can just slide that 100 bucks under the radar and get it past Jordan. Now, let's see what Jordan chose for his video choices. Okay, so Chris has his photography kit set up, but let's take a look at putting together my video package. And I've got a few really nice options in this price range. The first one I want to take a look at is the Fujifilm X-T4. It's got nice stabilization in it, and it's just my favorite straight out of camera picture. And it's got some fairly usable autofocus that I could certainly fall back on in a pinch, but autofocus is not the most important thing to me since I'm generally operating the camera. So the Fujifilm X-T4 is a fantastic video body, but I'm trying to put together an entire kit here. So I'm a little bit concerned, just there's not as many third-party lens options in the Fujifilm lineup, and a lot of the lenses aren't quite video optimized as well. Uh, so I'm gonna keep that in mind, but I'm gonna keep looking here. Now I absolutely love what Sony's been doing with a lot of their recent cameras for video. My major concern is the ones I really like are all more expensive, like an A7S III or an FX III. Uh, I could certainly afford an A7 III, but then I kind of run into the opposite situation that I had with the Fujifilm. Tons of great lens options and accessories for this. I just don't love using the A7 III body quite that much. You know, the electronic viewfinder is lower resolution. It doesn't have real-time tracking in video. As well, all the less expensive Sonys are 8-bit only. But man, I could put together an absolutely killer lens package looking at some of the Tamron and Sigma lens options that are supported on this. So that would be a really good option too. And oh, what new episode from Dunna did it. What is up people, Dunna here. And today I am super excited because we are gonna be talking about a whole pile of new gear that I got. I'd normally try not to get too much new gear, but I just couldn't help myself. It was a steal of a deal. It literally felt like theft. But before we hop into the gear, I wanna let you know that my new LUT pack is available at dunnadidit.com <sighs> store. All right, back to the shopping. Ah, here we go, the Panasonic S1. Now I can't afford to replace the S1H that I generally use to shoot the show, but here I get that same beautiful viewfinder on it. And with the recent firmware update, it has so many of the features from the S1H available for quite a bit less money. Now, as far as a lens for it, I do love the Panasonic 2470 largely because it has a focus clutch on it and a breathing corrected. But if I get an S1, and that lens, it puts me way over my budget. Good news though is the excellent Sigma 24 to 70 2.8, I could still get that with this body and stay just slightly under budget. I'm a little worried though, I'm not gonna have much money for accessories. Okay, so these are a few fantastic options. It's gonna be really tough to determine which one I'm gonna pick. I think it's really gonna come down to some of the accessories that I need to do my job. So I'm gonna price those out, see how much is left for a camera and lens, and then we're gonna meet up with Chris and see what he chose. Okay, hey Jordan, so here we are. It's time for our reveal on what kit we decided to go with. I am very excited to know what you chose. Well, you know, it's interesting what I had to choose because first off, uh, Jordan's a habitual rule follower. He has no joy, he has no leeway. He didn't let me go $80 over I mean, what is the point of having budget? rules if we're not gonna follow oh, the rules? I mean, There's 100 a bucks Canadian is like 46 cents US or something like that. Like you couldn't let me, anyways. So that was a big part of why I went with my decision. The Canon EOS R6 with 24-105 kit lens and the 50 STM. But there are some big positives there. I've got space left over to buy some accessories. Also, the 24-105 and the 50 mil are good lenses. I don't feel like I'm gonna have to replace them in the near future. And really, the Canon EOS R6 is still one of my favorite bodies. You ask most photographers who've used these cameras, they enjoy the grip, they enjoy the ergonomics, the handling, and you know, real-time Sony autofocus tracking is great, but I would actually argue that the Canon EOS R6 focuses basically as good. In some cases, actually does a better job. So this is a camera body that I'm gonna love using and that I can grow a system with. I wish I had more lenses, but you know, Jordan's rules. So what did you pick, Jordan? So I was really looking at the Panasonic S1, especially with the new firmware updates, but at the end, shooting video, I need a ton of accessories. So I wound up with 
the Panasonic S5. Now again, remember, these are the tools that are gonna work best for us. I'm very accustomed to manually focusing. That's why I went with a camera. Maybe not the best autofocus, but brilliant image quality and usability. Although I am definitely gonna miss the electronic viewfinder from the S1 and the S1H. But in terms of accessories, I need quite a bit more. And I realized I cannot live without my iFootage Cobra 2 monopod, which is not available from retailers in Canada. So I had to get that out of the States, was the only way, pay the hit on Ooh, the exchange wait, rate, the that's shipping. Not, that's not breaking the rules? That's, that's not cheating? Nope. This is rigged, this whole it's thing's still, rigged. I came in under budget uh, as well. I needed ND filters and for an audio kit, I went with Rode's new Rode Go 2. It gets me dual channel audio, but I could only afford one lav mic, so the other person's gonna have to have a big stupid looking box on their chest. Those are the sacrifices that we make when you've been horribly ripped off and you have to start from scratch again. But this is a very competent little setup here with the Sigma 2470. I think it's gonna make me very happy. All right, Jordan, so that does it for our best under $4,000 kit uh, that yes. we would choose. It was a lot of fun. We had more leeway there, but it'd be fun to do like a money's no object uh, dream kit. Hey? Totally, yeah. I, yeah. I think if you want to see that, definitely let us know in the comments or subscribe and yeah. then you'll see it when it does What come would out. you go for right off the top I of mean, your head? I mean, Alexa, probably. I'm going to go with know, like six Leica like Q2s, Beautiful. just all different limited editions. Yeah. Love it. Uh, so uh, also, we want to say special thanks to Justin, right? From Done and Did It. His show's fantastic. Do check it out. And uh, he did us a real solid on this video. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it was obvious that that was a bit, the thievery thing. I mean, I feel like we are great actors. accused though. of a lot of things on our show recently. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. we, we have uh, we have accused of stuff. He looks like he's killed a man before, or at least could. He's always been a great sport, though. Yep. Please let us know if you agree with our choices. What would you do differently if you had a similar budget? Put those in the comments below. We'd love to read that. And uh, if you are in a situation where you are looking to buy gear, just like we're talking about here today, go to deepreview.com. We actually have buyer's guides on there, which specifically help you out to decide how best to spend your money. Those uh, links will be in the description below. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you guys soon on Deep TV.